today we are testing out a ton of fine liners. So here's a better look of what we're working with now. All of these other than the Prismacolor and the Copic ones are brand new, never been tried before. I have never actually used any of the other ones before. I might have used the Microns, but it's been years and I don't really remember what they were like. Um, the multi-liners and the Prismacolor ones are the ones I tend to gravitate towards when I'm using fine liners now. So I'm very interested in testing the other ones out, seeing what is different between them and I guess we will find out if I have a new go-to fine liner after all of this. So I guess we'll start by cracking into some of these packages and I guess just a general overview of each marker. First up is the Prismacolor Premier Fine Line Markers. They are available in 0.05 to 8 as well as brush and chisel tips and they are described as archival, lightfast, and water resistant. Then we have the Copic Multi-Liners. These are available in 0 0.03 to 1, as well as 2, 4, and brush tips. And they are also described as being archival, water, and fade resistant. Next is the Tombow Mono Drawing Pen. They are available in sizes 0, 01 to 0, 08, and there is nothing that I could find online that would describe these as anything archival, water resistant, fade proof, any of that. Next up are the Unipin Fine Line Markers. And these are available in sizes 0.03 to 08, as well as a brush tip. They are described as fade and water resistant. Next are the Windsor and Newton fine liners. They are available in 0.05 to 1, and they are water resistant and fade proof. Next are the Derwent graphic line markers. They are available in sizes 0.05 to 08, and they are also described as water and fade resistant. Next are the Sakura Pigma Micron Pens. They are available in 003 to 1 brush and marker tips, but unlike all of the other pens, the number on the markers don't actually equal the diameter of the tip itself. And last but not least are the Molotow Black Liner Markers. They are available in 005 to 1 brush, chisel, round, and calligraphy tips, and are described as archival, water, and fade resistant. I figured we would start off with the Tombow pen since it is the group of pen that I have the least of. Now I'm not going to be swatching every single marker that I have for the different brands. It's really not necessary. I mean, they come in the various sizes and, you know, I'm testing out the flow, the water resistance, all of that kind of stuff. The comparison of the different sizes is really not applicable for this. I will try and I'm pretty sure I have a 0.5 millimeter uh, pen for every brand, so I guess we will use uniform it across the board with testing out using that. So wrote Tombow down first and I guess I'm just going to, you know, scribble, do some lines so that we can add some watercolor over top, see how it reacts, uh, maybe some alcohol marker uh, because I know a lot of people use fine liners and alcohol markers, so we'll do that as well. Originally, I had filmed this swatching with commentary, but I figured you could all probably do without the incredibly insightful comments about how they all seem to work like perfectly typical fine liners. But seriously, all I did was go through the different brands that I had labeled what the swatches underneath were going to be, and then just scribbled some lines to test the flow if there was any issues between any of them, which I didn't notice anything. Just do different scribbles so that I had a decent swatch test area to then test out the watercolor and alcohol marker over top. So here we are back. You saw me add the little black test swatch things. I just really wanted to see a more solid uh, punch of the blackness just to see if I could tell any difference between them. And the swatches on the bottom were just like a base level test. It is the Pentel brush pen just to see how much the ink actually did sink into the paper and also to give me an actual like standardized black comparison to see if I could tell any difference between any of these particular pens to see if I could see any of them were darker. And honestly, they all look equally as black to me. The graphic one might look the darkest. These two I would say look the darkest, but honestly it could just be me. So we're going to start with some watercolor swatches across them to see how water resistant these are. 
I decided to use Opera Pink for the watercolor because I figured it was a translucent and light enough color that if there was any graying that was going to happen with the pens, that was going to be a great color to be able to see any of that show up in. And other than just putting the swatch of color over top of the pen, I did try and scrub at it and sort of gradient it out into more of the middle of the lines just in case a more of a scrubbing action over the pens had a different effect with any possible color runoff. I'm just gonna do like a heavier water swatch in the middle here, just so that if there is any sort of bleeding or whatever, it's actually going to hopefully show up and be like a good comparison for everything. Keep in mind this isn't watercolor paper, so depending on what kind of paper you use, it could differ these results quite a lot. Of course, I just got water on the um, brush pen there, which is probably not going to help those swatches if anything weird is going on with them. Yeah, these three look a little gray, but I have a feeling it's not actually the pens themselves. I'm going to go at this upper corner. Okay. So that one definitely has a bit of grayness when you have it in more condensed um, area. I'm going to go actually at all of these and see if I can get anything to lift. So that one does look like it lifted a bit, but I'm going to go down to this and see. Yeah, these ones definitely do not appear to be moving as much as the other. A little, but that could just be like excess pigmentation on top. I'm trying not to scrub too hard. So there is a bit, in, bit of graying with a few of these. Trying to clean my brush off so that it's a nice even test across them all. So there's a look at the water section of the test. Actually doing the like test on the square is definitely more condensed area of the marker pigment. So I'm not entirely sure how well that had to dry compared to just the individual lines. Obviously these are fine liners, so they are meant to be used in more of a line capacity and not necessarily coloring in. And as far as the lines themselves go, there doesn't appear to be a significant amount of graying. Uh, definitely these two, these three, I would say, look the most grayed out. Uh, definitely these two more than the graphic ones. Uh, but overall, it's not like terrible, honestly. Nothing is like a crazy gray. I did use, like I said, a pretty light color so that you could really see if there was any graying. And overall, it's pretty minimal. I don't think if you ended up using one of those in a painting, it would be end up being like a catastrophic mess. But now let's switch over to an alcohol marker. So this is a Prismacolor Premier a marker in Canary Yellow. Again, I wanted to go with a light color. So if there's any catastrophes happening, we're going to be able to see them easily. And yeah, I'm just going to go at it and we will see how this fares. I can't tell you the last time I used an alcohol marker, so this is not my forte, but I know a lot of people do use fine liners and alcohol markers in combination with each other, so did want to do ju this just so that we could actually see uh, what ends up happening. So far, the graphic one, I'd say smudged a little, uh, but all of these other ones seem to be fine. So far, anyway. So there's a look at that. Honestly, for the most part, that one looks a little gray, but I did scrub at that one more. Okay, so that one's definitely, I'm gonna scrub at these a bit more. Okay, there we go. Maybe, well actually, this is now dirty, so. <laughs> That's not helping the test case. So if you scrub at it, I'm trying to like get this so that you don't see any cross contamination here, shall we say. Yeah, 
I did let these sit for a while, but I think the visual uh, comparison between these all should speak for themselves. So as far as running, the Unipins actually seem to have worked perfectly fine, like despite these two being possibly the most problematic in my case because I'm using watercolor the most, they seem to have held up pretty well with the alcohol marker. Uh, these four, I think I would say, did the worst. Uh, the Tombow one seems to have blacked the most, um, smudged the most. Uh, the Molotow didn't seem to have done a great job either, uh, but it is, I would say, pat I mean, it depends on how much you're scrubbing your lines, I guess. Like I said, I really never use alcohol markers, so I can't say how much that might affect, depending on, like, the techniques that I would use for drawing, uh, but I'm sure you know how you use alcohol marker and if you currently have a problem with smudging lines and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so I would say the Prismacolor and Copic, for both of them, they seem to have ranked the best. They don't seem to have really smudged or grayed for either uh, test at all, as far as I can tell. The Windsor Newton did really good for the water. It didn't seem to have had done great for the alcohol. There's a little graying, uh, but I would say it is probably in third as far as these two are almost identical as ter in terms of swatching again they are not the newest markers so i'm not sure if you know if there is any like slightly drier ink in them if it's affecting anything at all uh but as far as the new ones that straight out of the package and never being used i would say the windsor newton ranks third just because it seems to have had no problem with the water and the least amount of problem. It really depends on what you're looking at using these for, I guess, because these two did not rank great for water, but they seem to have held up the uh, alcohol marker fine, which I forget exactly the makeup at the moment. I'm sure you just saw it in the video and you're going to start commenting that I'm an idiot because, you know, some of these I know are water-based and that would explain why they are reacting not as good with the water and far better with the alcohol marker. So don't exactly remember the makeup of each individual ones of these. So this is just me ranking them off of the top of my head in terms of my use, which I would be using these with watercolor the most. So these two definitely ranked really good in the alcohol marker department. They would be on par with the Prismacolor and the Copic ones in terms of smudgeability, but they are ranking the lowest for watercolor. So yeah, honestly, as of just this test, I am going to be using them in some artwork. I would quite happily use any of these. I would be the most concerned about these two if I was adding water over top, which for what I'm going to do, I'm am going to, so I guess we're going to see and find out what happens there and how much it like sinking into watercolor paper and how that might affect future artwork and hopefully my tests don't turn out terribly. But yeah, that is a look at the just generalized standard comparison between the eight markers and let's get into some actual practical testing with some artwork. So here's what I have for my practical test case. First of all, excuse the possible worst layout on the page that I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Originally, I was planning on having two eyes on one page, two eyes on the page over here, and I just realized it was going to be a gigantic waste of space and look extremely strange. So this is a very strange layout, definitely not my best. But anyway, as you can see, I have four sets of eyes, so eight individual eyes to line up perfectly with every different type of marker that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair up the two markers that I feel like performed most similarly uh, to do the set of eyes together, so it's a little bit of a closer comparison. Um, yeah, and we'll go from there. I will definitely label or just to show in the video which eye um, is done in which marker so that when I actually go and start to watercolor these a little bit, uh, we will actually know which marker possibly has the most problems if any problems arise. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start outlining these. 
Now I figured that the eyes were going to be a really easy, uniform, simple test for me to just quickly draw up so that I had something to actually use these markers on, but I quickly realized that if I was just outlining them, there wasn't actually much fine liner to test. So I did eventually decide to add cross hatching through all of them, which I'm not sure if that sort of like bit me later because obviously the cross hatching I did like full realism to a point with the cross hatching which of course then meant that I guess the under drawing for the watercolor that I wanted to add over top was significantly more gray uh, than it would have been if it was just the blank paper so looking back at this all of these do have a bit of a gray tinge it's not the markers themselves it well I mean it is the markers it's not the markers running though it's the cross hatching underneath the watercolor that you can of course see because it's a translucent medium I do think that these turned out reasonably okay with the watercolor over top after regardless it's just they definitely have a bit more of a gray tinge than I was going for with the color schemes for these and I just wanted to sort of mention that it was not the markers running because I did try and pull out the skin tone past any of the cross hatching just to see if there was any uh, running of the marker of any kind and there was never any graying there it was just you know where the cross hatching was where I put it also for each of these eyes, I only used two different markers. I used a 0.5 for the just general outlining of everything, and then I went back with a 0.1 to do more of the fine detail and the cross hatching. So I wanted to just really keep it uniform across all of them, and I tend to not be someone that really flips between like every single uh, width of fine liner when I'm working. So I wanted to keep it as you know realistic to my normal workflow as possible possible when testing these out. When I was using these, I really wasn't giving much thought to the fact that I was switching out the material and marker that I was using for every eye, so I would like to think that that meant that I was probably not adjusting any techniques whatsoever. I was just, you know, switching from marker to marker and still doing the exact same thing from eye to eye. And my initial impression when I was using these was that I really did not notice much of a difference. There wasn't a particular marker that was giving me more trouble than the next one. They all seemed to have a great ink flow. They all seemed to be nice and black, gave a nice smooth line on this paper, which this is more of a mixed media paper. I just sketched these in my Travelogue Square sketchbook that I'm trying to finish up. And so it does have definitely some grain. It's not perfect perfectly smooth and that really didn't phase these much at all. Obviously, if you're using perfectly smooth like Bristol paper like I was for the swatches, it will glide on smoother, but there really wasn't any uh, patchiness to these more than I would expect, you know, from any fine liner really. Uh, honestly, the lines on these were I found quite uh, smooth despite the fact that the paper does have a tooth to it. So like I said, first impression of these while I was using them was that they all pretty much worked interchangeably with one another, at least when used on their own in any sort of drawing sketching capacity like I'm doing here with just the cross hatching. But looking back on this footage, something that I do notice between the different eyes, especially because like I mentioned, I did not feel like I was adjusting my technique at all to, I guess, adapt to the new marker. I would like to think that I was essentially using Using the same, I guess, hand heaviness when doing all of the cross hatching and the various techniques that I was doing. Uh, so one thing that I have noticed now looking back at this footage and these eyes is that different markers appear to have more variance in tone, I guess. I did notice right away with the Winsor Newton markers, which is what I'm using here that I seem to have been able to get a much lighter, finer crosshatch with the 0.1 markers. My guess would be is that it would be directly related to the texture of the nib itself. Some of them just must be slightly drier than others, which allows you to get a slightly more varied range in your tone when cross hatching. Because like I said, some of the lines were really black and I really couldn't get any variance in them, which, you know, for a fine liner is essentially what you want. Um, but the Winsor Newton one definitely was by far the one, even when I was using it, that I noticed. 
noticed a fairly distinct difference with the tone value that I could achieve just with the one marker. But yeah, overall, like I mentioned, I feel like I would be quite happy to use any of these at the very least in this sort of sketching, drawing capacity. We will get into testing these out with watercolor in a minute, but for now, here is a look at all of the finished eyes. You can be the judge for which marker you feel like performed the best. Any difference in tone, I feel like, is just glare from my studio lights and not actual difference in darkness of pigmentation of the marker itself. But now let's get into actually adding some watercolor to these eyes. finished watercolored eyes. While painting these and looking at them afterwards, I really don't notice any graying where any of the markers might have started to smudge and bleed because of adding watercolor over top, which is great. Obviously, that might not be the case depending on the piece that you're working on and how much fine liner might be on the piece, but considering that these were fully cross-hatched, I feel like this is a pretty good test to say, you know, if there was any sort of minute graying that was going on, it really ended up not being noticeable or at least any amount of a problem that really deterred from the look of the final images. Which, you know, is obviously what you want. Nothing is worse than spending all of this time on a piece and then have your materials not work well together. 
here are all of the markers that I've tested out and I wanted to close this video off by I guess giving my final thoughts on each one. Now I originally thought of trying to rank these from best to worst but honestly I'm sure as you can guess from you know the general theme of this video is I actually had a pretty positive time with all of these pens and honestly I don't think I could rank them above or below each other for certain ones because there's quite a few of them that react and work very similarly. So I'm going to go through and say what I like and dislike about each one and I guess, you know, just general thoughts about each marker type because I feel like any of these would be a great options. So starting off at the top with the Prismacolor ones, this obviously had the best water and marker resistance. It had nothing that budged at all when I tested it on the original swatch chart. Really the only downside that I could see with its closest competitor, which I would say would be the Copic Multiliner, is that it's not available in as many nib sizes, which, you know, isn't the end of the world, but it is something that I guess puts an edge on the Copic ones, possibly other than the Copic ones also have options for the multiliners that you can refill them. Uh, the SP ones are refillable and they have a ton of different colors. Both of them have multiple colors colors available, but the Copic Multiliners come in just an astronomical amount of color options. And again, for the Copic Multiliner, really there's not that many downsides that I could come up with for this one. The only thing that I could really think of is that as far as I can tell from everything that I could read up about these, nowhere is it mentioned to be considered light fast. Doesn't mean it isn't, it just never marketed itself like that. So I would guess that, you know, even if it is, it hasn't been tested for it. So I know that is something that a lot of people are concerned about, the light fastness of the materials that they're using using. So really that is the one thing that I could just point out as a possible downside that you could have with the multi-liners. But as far as everything else goes, I think that the multi-liners are still going to be my go-to default fine liner. I know I never have to worry about the water resistance with those ones and they are also quite easy for me to get in Canada. That's something that I haven't really had an option to talk about in this video, but I feel like a big selling point to, you know, what one you might want to look at going after, what one might end up being your favorite is the ease of availability for wherever you live. And the Copic Multiliners are very easy for me to buy individually. So if I run out of a particular size, very easy for me to get replacements of. And while all of these are apparently available individually, I know that there are quite a few of them that I'm sure I would have an issue trying to easily get individually. Moving on to the Molotow Black Liner, my first impression of this marker was that it was available in a ton of different sizes, which I believe it still is the fine liner available in the most individual sizes. It basically is available in every point of millimeter. Um, it does not jump like it has 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, whereas, you know, most fine liners sort of do the 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. That jumping by twos, not sure how much of a selling point that would be for you, but it's definitely an interesting point worth mentioning. But the downside is that it doesn't quite have the best water or marker resistance. It's not terrible, but compared to the Copic Multiliner and the Prismacolor ones, it's just slightly not as good. Next up, we have the Pigma Micron pens. For these ones, I feel like the main obvious plus side is that it has pretty much perfect, as far as I can tell, marker resistance. It performed just as well as the Copic and Prismacolor markers, but the downside, unfortunately, is that it didn't quite have the same resistance for water, which I'm sure is just the makeup of that particular marker. So if you are someone that is using alcohol marker with your fine liners, I think this would be an amazing option. But if you're like me and watercolor is normally your main thing, this might be a little lower down on your list. And pretty much the exact same thing can be said for the Unipin fine line markers. They pretty much performed identically to the Pigma Micron pens. The one plus side that I could see is that 
according to everything that I was researching, looking up these markers, they ended up coming out to be the most inexpensive markers individually. So that might be a great option if you're really into the Pigma Micron pens, the Unipin ones might be a great alternative for you. You might want to check them out, especially with that additional possible savings. Now onto the Tombow Mono Drawing Pen. These had great water resistance, but I would say possibly the worst marker resistance. It seemed to have smudged the most out of all of the ones that I tested. So if using alcohol markers with your fine liners is your thing, these probably are not the ones for you. As far as the graphic line markers go, the one thing that really stood out with these ones is that just from my initial test, it was one of the ones that looked the blackest. I know I mentioned that I wasn't sure if it was just, you know, my eyes were going, if I was just being paranoid, if it was sinking into the paper differently, but I would just say that these graphic markers have excellent pigmentation, but unfortunately the downside is that they didn't perform the best for the water or marker resistance. It wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't anything fantastic or noticeable, so overall these are just kind of like an average fine liner for me. And last but not least are the Windsor & Newton fine liners. The main standout thing for me for this marker was the variants that I could get with the cross hatching that I did on the eyes. It's something that I felt like wasn't particularly noticeable with any of the other markers. Like I mentioned, I'm sure it just is a drier nib or something, but it is something that was interesting and worth noticing because fine liners tend to be very one dimensional. And as for downsides, the main thing would be that it didn't perform the best for the marker resistance side of things. And those are all of my thoughts on these fine liners. I would love to know what your favorite go-to fine liner is, especially if it wasn't one that I tried out. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.